Okay, our subject today is a very practical subject. In the Bible, it's a sin. But also, it can be guidance. There's an evil form of, and there's a good form. That I think we have placed the blame on others and other things. I remember growing up as a child and something would happen and my mom would say, who did this? And I'd say, the dog did it. An imaginary person did it. And this goes all the way back to our parents of Adam and Eve. Look at Genesis chapter 3. Verse 11, and he said, God, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree which I commanded thee that thou shalt not eat? Now, the proper answer, as we know, is for Adam is, yes, God, I have eaten of the fruit that you warned me of. I have done wrong. That's the truth. And we look at the realm of uh, blame. Now we're going to twist it. I can't imagine how many judges have heard instead of the truth a blame. And the man, Adam, said, the woman who now gave us to be with me, she gave me the tree and I did eat. Okay, look at that. Adam, what's your trouble? Adam, who did wrong? The woman. The wife. To help me. It's her fault. And then he takes it one notch bigger to say, you gave her to me. So to completely get out of the guilt, Adam says, Eve, the woman, to the wife, and it is your fault, God. Now, the number one definition or priority of a pardon is you have to admit, confess your guilt. Legally bound by the law, I don't care what presidents do, you cannot pardon. You cannot receive a legal pardon if you don't testify and confess your guilt. At this point right now, Adam cannot get a, a, a pardon. He has passed his sin onto the woman. Yes, she gave the fruit, whatever the fruit was. But he didn't have to eat it. You know, you're in school and you got a bunch of kids in the peer pressure and I started smoking because they're smoking. I took that drink because they gave me the bottle, the can. I started doing drugs because no, no. You have the right to say no. And you realize in religious communities and religious countries, say like Islam, you can be killed by disobeying their rules and regulations. It's not really so in America. 
but to get uh, the blame. Listen, Adam is standing before the almighty God. He fears the consequence of disobeying what God said not to do. Because God did say death. All right, so Adam says, it's the woman you gave me, and it's you that gave me. So the Lord God said, verse 13, unto the woman, Eve, to help me, the wife. What is this that has done? What, your husband told me you did this. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So what's the woman's blame? The serpent. What would have been the proper answer for the woman? Oh, the serpent showed up, started talking to me. I twisted and added and changed the word of God. And I took the fruit. And yes, I gave it to my husband. And we both ate the fruit. No. No. The serpent did it. Have you ever said your brother, your sister, maybe a parent, maybe a cousin, maybe the dog, maybe the cat, whatever it is. And quite frankly, it's to go to your parent or whoever and say, hey, I did it. We were playing ball in the house and I know we're not supposed to play ball. In the house and it broke. I mean, you gotta suffer the consequences. Because you disobey. That's life. That's sowing and reaping. That's why man blames because they don't want the consequences. And I get the funny feeling that the, at the judgment seat of Christ for the Christians in the great right throne judgment. I guarantee you, if God allows us to have our word, our defense, I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of blaming. My health concerns and my health downfall is my fault. I got to bear it. It's no sense of saying, you know, why I'm on auctioning. They made me do it. It's no sense of saying diabetes taking all my life because of. No. Hey, to say, Lord, it's my fault. I am guilty. I plead for your mercy and grace and your pardon. And if I'm guilty, a pardon can only be received if you're guilty. I was in the jail ministry many years, and one of the messages I, I said was, I asked the question, I said, who in this room? Oh, 20 to 30 men. I said, who in this room is guilt, is not guilty? You are completely innocent in every single, in every hand. Not, there wasn't a person in that room but me. They didn't shoot their hand up in the air. I said, you can't receive a pardon. You need to go back to yourselves. If any warden, any heir of the court, any governor, any president of the United States came into a prison and proclaimed, A pardon legally and rightfully, if you do not confess and take to your actions a guilt, you don't get the pardon. It's that simple. First Samuel. First Samuel fifteen. 
1 Samuel 15, 15. Verse Samuel 15, 15. And Saul said, that's King Saul, before David, they, the people, Israel, have brought them from the Lamanites. For the people spared the be- the people, spared the best of the sheep, the oxen, the sacrifice, and the Lord thy God. And the rest had they utterly destroyed. Okay, that sounds... Verse 9. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that's good. It would not utterly destroy them. For everything that was vile and refuse that they destroyed utterly. Now God told them, go in there and conquer the Agag, conquer the Amalekites, Destroy all. Okay, let's see. Verse 3. Now go and smite in the Malachites. Verse 2. This is the Lord speaking. And utterly destroy all they have. Spare not. Spare them not. But slay both men and women. Infant, suckling, ox, sheep. Camel and ass. So we read in verse 9, Saul and the people spared. When questioned by Samuel, verse 15, Saul said, They have. So what is the king doing? He's put in the blame, a half blame, like Adam, any. Well, it's the people. The people spared the best. Excuse me, Saul. The Holy Spirit has recorded that you also. So this king, this military leader, they sacrificed the people. I'm innocent. Now, this doesn't happen, but let's say by chance, what if God destroyed all those who were guilty? Samuel and Saul would have been the only one standing there, according to what he said, because Saul said, hey, listen, they, in all actuality, the Bible says, you and they. What do you think that does for the morale of the troops? When your commander, not me, them, what do you think it does in the marriage when your husband, purple, that's not going to build a, a, a great marriage. And there's a lot of husbands out there who blame their wives wrongfully. There are commanders out there who are put on the skittle. They, that department, bosses do it. How come that report wasn't done? Well, you know, Fred, Louise, Ben. Hey, Charlie, how come you didn't come out to the office? Well, my wife. Exodus. Exodus 32. 24. This is a weird one. Moses is confronting Aaron about the golden cow and the worldly worship. 
Look at look, look at what Aaron said. Aaron made the golden calf and said unto them, "Whether whosoever has any gold, yes, let them break it off, yes." So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Well, kind of hard because where is that? I didn't write it down. Look at verse 4. He received it of their hands, fashioned it with a graven tool. After he had made the molten calf, he tells Moses, Oh, you know, I threw it in the fire. Boom, here's this calf. Well, look, look at the rest of verse 4, which is not said, These be thy gods, O Israel. That's a violation of the Ten Commandments given. Aaron, the spiritual leader, we just saw Adam, the husband. We just seen Saul, the military leader. Here is Aaron, the spiritual leader, office by Moses. And he, he puts the blame on circumstance. You know, again, the imaginary, you, know, you, you, you ever have, ask a child, and this is funny, but this family circus comic strip is, who did it? Not me. You know, he's got that little ghost that runs around to not me. Was it me? That's what it is now. It wasn't me. It wasn't the people. You know, here I put it in, and here it came out. So I don't know. I don't know. Galatians. Galatians. Chapter 2. Verse 11. To 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, they were first called Christians in Antioch. Our Bibles come from him. I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Peter had a double whammy of the Gentiles and Jewish people. Peter has come to acknowledge now, hey, you know, the law is done for diets and all that. I, I can sit down and have a pork sandwich. Until the Jews show up. Verse 12. But you see, Peter was at fault. Peter was at fault. And Paul rebuked him. And there are churches out there, as you know. We don't cast upon people's sins. We love them. We don't proclaim sins. We don't preach sins and all that. We love them. We give them the benefit of doubt. Not Paul. Now here is a blame that Paul says, I rebuked him. I withstood him. Face to face. In verse 12 and 13, he says what the offense is. There better be an offense that is correct. And you better deal with the person one on one. Now, here's a blame the tree.
Now, Genesis 4, Genesis 4, 9. Now, I don't go into the Greek or Hebrew or anything like that, but this was found in the Webster's Dictionary, 1828 edition, is the root word of the Greek of blame. I thought this was interesting. Blasphemy. Blame comes from the root word from the Greek. Blasphemy. It's blasphemy. Except for in the case of Paul and Peter. Where it was right. It is blasphemy. For a husband to blame the wife. It is blasphemy for a leader to blame the people. And it's blasphemy to blame circumstance. Now, the best thing is if you do not know. Let's say, for instance, let's say mom comes home and the lamp was broken. But you really didn't do it. Maybe the wind blew. I don't know. If you can properly say, I don't know. Maybe the dog was running around chasing his tail and hit the table and the lamp fell. And you can say, honestly, it's the dog. Okay. What about oh, Adam did eat the fruit? What about Adam said, listen, I ate the fruit. I know you told me not to eat the fruit. I ate the fruit. Man, the Lord said, well, what happened for you to eat the fruit? Well, she gave it to me. Or maybe God would have dealt it with, okay, Adam, it's your fool. Because it was. Adam was put, hey, now look, look, look. Genesis 4, 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? All right, the blame is to the Lord is not my responsibility. Now, this is where you're saying a brother or a sister. Not my business. Well, actuality, way the Bible puts Cain possibly older than Abel, even if they were twins. Well, the older sibling, well, yes. It is your responsibility. And we do know from the scriptures, it is Cain that murdered Abel. And if you have done any injustice to a brother, to a sister, to a cousin, to anybody, a neighbor, whatever. And you are called to question by the authorities, by your parents, by the school. And your answer is anything but the truth. Blasphemy. 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 If you're going to lie, John 8, 44, the foundation of lies are, and it's quite funny to be running into Genesis 4, you of your father the devil and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and bold not in the truth because there is no truth in him. 
And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. When you lie, you're following Satan's example. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It's that plain and simple. 